Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kamil Kuzmiak and in today's episode we're gonna be testing out the Apple ProRes codec in the new iPhone 13 Pro and we're gonna try to answer the question if it's really worth it to use it. Let's get to it. Okay guys, it's quite difficult to show you the difference between ProRes and the H.264 codec, especially considering the fact that we're gonna be uploading the video to YouTube and YouTube is gonna apply some extra compression on top of the compression that we already have. However, I will do my best to showcase the difference using the examples I've shot today. To see the difference between highly compressed videos and videos with low compression, we need to compare videos with loads of details and we need to compare them side by side, because the quality of highly compressed videos usually falls apart the most when there is loads of details in the shot and if there is a lot of motion in the shot as well. When you compare stationary shots with loads of details but without any motion, highly compressed video is actually doing pretty well, however when you zoom in you can see the difference. It is a very subtle difference and it's mostly in the details. Highly compressed videos retains less details and also you get more of that artificial sharpening. Another thing you can notice on the highly compressed video is the in-camera denoising. The great thing about shooting in ProRes is that you retain all the original details and because you're not getting that artificial sharpening and in-camera denoising, you can decide if you want to apply those effects and how much you want to apply it. And for example, if you want your iPhone video to look more cinematic, then you won't apply any artificial sharpening or maybe you're just gonna apply it in some certain points. Maybe you're just gonna sharpen someone's eyes, but you're gonna mask out the rest of the background, for example. In the first example, stationary objects should look fine. However, let's zoom in and examine all the moving parts of the image, like ducks, maybe the water, maybe the leaves on the trees, but obviously uh, it's pixel peeping and we need to zoom in like 400%. So keep in mind how closely we have to examine the image to actually see any difference and how massive is the difference in the file size. This is also a very challenging example for the highly compressed video. So let's zoom in and have a closer look. This is actually pretty close, however on the ProRes video you can see more of that real detail and in the highly compressed video details are mostly that artificial sharpening. In this example I think we should zoom in and examine the details and captions on that red box. Let's see if we're gonna see the difference. Let's take a closer look on this concrete piece of fence and see if we're gonna see some difference here. In this example we have couple nice details, so let's check the difference on the license plate on that red car. And also let's have a closer look on the bricks, if we're gonna see any difference in the bricks. Okay, we have another very busy image, so let's have a closer look and examine some details. Actually trees and leaves are a very good example to check the quality of the compression, because there is lots of them and they are moving and usually if the video is highly compressed, uh, you can't see good individual leaves and it's turning into this uh, mushy green mess. Actually I was quite lucky with this one because I was able to film the fly on the leaf and I don't have two iPhones, I had to take these videos one by one so now we can zoom in and compare the details on that little fly. As you can see the difference is very very subtle however I think that the ProRes fly looks slightly better than the H.264 fly. However is it the 20 times more of storage worth of difference? I don't know. Alright, we are in the bushes again, so let's compare the details on the leaves here. Okay, as you can see, it's difficult to see the difference on the stationary shots, so I decided I need to shoot some motion. The more detail and motion you have in the shots, 
the more severe the compression is going to be. But because I don't have two phones, I'm gonna have to do it differently. So basically I'm gonna put the iPhone on the tripod and I will film the spinning fan because fan, it has that cage with a lot of details and it's not only spinning, but it's also moving from side to side. So hopefully this one will uh, help me to showcase the difference between the ProRes and the H264 codec. Okay, so let's just zoom in on the metal mesh of the fan and let's see if we can spot any loss of detail or if there is any strange artifacts going on. As you can see, again, it's pretty close. However, on the ProRes video, we can see a slightly better details on that metal mesh. I decided to do another experiment and I printed out the focusing chart so we can get more details in motion to work with. So let's take a closer look how the focusing chart looks in motion and in both ProRes and H.264 codec. Because the more detail and more motion you get in the shot, it's more challenging for the compression, I decided to make it slightly more difficult. So I placed the fan in front of the screen and I played some very detailed fractal animations in the background to provide more motion and more details. Because the plain background actually makes it more easy for the compression, let's see how well it will handle if there is loads of things moving on the screen, many different colors and details at the same time, and nothing stays still. Now let's try some color grading and let's see if the ProRes will give us any extra slack on the post-production and if we're gonna notice any image deterioration or quality loss with the H.264 footage. Let's try to push the colors and grade the image until we get some issues with the H.264 codec and let's see if we're even gonna get any issues. Okay guys, as you can see, we can notice a small difference uh, between very compact codecs like H.264 or H.265 and Apple ProRes. There is definitely a difference in quality and we get way more information with Apple ProRes. However, the difference in file size is so huge that you really need to have a good reason to use it. To be honest, I was wondering if I'm gonna be using it, especially for that very reason I bought the 500 gigabytes uh, version of iPhone 13 Pro to have that extra storage for the ProRes files. On my phone, uh, I can fit around uh, one hour of footage in ProRes, which is not that much, to be honest. My thoughts are, it's really useful to have it, and uh, use it on the occasion. I would never use it all the time to film all the uh, not so very important stuff because that would fill up my uh, hard drive very, very fast. Maybe if I was like a big and famous YouTuber like Marcus Bromley or Peter McKinnon and I had some massive server uh, personal storage uh, in my studio, then maybe I would shoot everything in progress just to have that extra slack of quality on the post-production. However, still that would uh, be a little bit time consuming because if you want to transfer the files uh, from your iPhone to your uh, Mac, you need to either use a lighting cable or airdrop, or you can also use the internet connection and uh, upload them to the cloud. However, the files are so huge, it takes a long time. So even if I would have a massive storage space, transferring the files every single day would be a little bit challenging. Hopefully in the future iPhones, we're gonna have some faster port like uh, Thunderbolt 4 or something like that. And then we're gonna be able to transfer the big ProRes files to our computer very, very fast. So I was thinking when I would use it. So first of all, let's say, if I was shooting a documentary and let's say I'm filming with the camera, but there is certain places I can't go with the camera because it's forbidden, because it's not allowed to film there, or maybe I want to keep the low profile. I don't want to attract uh, too much attention. Then I would take my iPhone and then I would uh, film in ProRes. Uh, so the footage has that little extra edge of quality and a bit more room in the post-production that will give me a better chance to match my iPhone footage with my camera footage. It's so good to have that extra edge of quality that 
helps you to fix more stuff in post and color match your footage. Even if I would be shooting like a short film or feature film and I would have this situation that I want to take a very unique um, shot in very tight space where I can't really fit the camera because there is not enough space, maybe then I would also use iPhone. Uh, with um, that ProRes codec as well. Another use I can think of is that imagine if you have some very important event in your life, I don't know, maybe your daughter graduates and you want to film her receiving the diploma and then you can flip to ProRes to film that 15-13 seconds clip in ProRes and it's gonna be more future-proof, you're gonna be able to, to tweak it, to fix it if there is something wrong with it. Obviously, you don't want to film long memories, like if you want to film entire Christmas uh, using ProRes and you don't have like a massive hard drive storage or like a server in your house, you're gonna definitely uh, get into trouble. So I'm not talking about filming like long family events uh, or anything like that. I'm talking about these short clips of memories and this moment is so important for you and it's short and you want to have it in the highest quality possible, then I would switch to ProRes. Another thing I was thinking to use it in the spontaneous situations, like sometimes you are somewhere in a very beautiful location and you see magnificent landscape and there is beautiful sunset and you think to yourself, I don't have my camera on me and this shot would be fantastic for my new music video or maybe for the video I will be doing in the future and you are so disappointed that you don't have the camera, you can take out your iPhone, you can switch to ProRes and you can film that beautiful landscape in that higher quality and even though the footage it's not gonna be as good as uh, the footage from the camera, it's gonna blend well together and it's always better to have footage than not to have footage. Another um, use uh, I could think of is uh, maybe um, shooting a short dynamic b-roll for my vlog when I know I'm gonna be editing it uh, straight away. The entire talking sequence I would always record in the H.264 codec because shooting half an hour talking sequence in ProRes would be a suicide. Basically, it would fill up my uh, MacBook storage and it's not worth it, in my opinion, to shoot a talking sequence in ProRes for a vlog. That's another thing I was thinking about. If you shoot an interview with somebody and it's a very important uh, job for you and you have your lights set up, you have this important guest and you have this one moment to shoot the interview with him and let's say the unthinkable happens and your camera is broken and you have a choice. You can tell them that your camera is broken or you can rig your iPhone to your camera so it looks like you're shooting with your camera but you are really shooting with your iPhone. You can switch to ProRes if you have good enough lighting and it's a nice uh, shot there is a big chance that the client won't tell that it was taken with an iPhone if it's like an interview shot and you can save the day. So then you can treat your iPhone like a great backup. So if your camera is broken and you don't have a secondary one, there is no time to call somebody, there is no time to rent a camera body. Uh, there is this short window of opportunity, you can take this content and there is a big pressure on you, then you can use uh, ProRes to save your skin. I think for a guy like me, 500 gigabytes is enough, but if the money wasn't an issue, I would go for the highest uh, possible storage just to have that extra backup. Okay, so to summarize, it's great to have ProRes in your pocket. Is it a good idea to use it all the time? No. Is it for everybody? No. Is it good to use it on the occasion and in the special situations and in the crisis situations? Yes, definitely yes. Oh, there is one last thing. If I saw a Bigfoot or uh, maybe an alien spacecraft, then I would switch to ProRes to have a good evidence for the press. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for today's vlog. If you had fun, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there is more content on the way and see you in the next one.